chapter telepathy. Uh, keep in mind that my understanding of telepathy is secondary. I haven't experienced telepathy firsthand. But some of the Earth humans do experience telepathy when they communicate with extraterrestrials. This telepathic communication can be local, face-to-face uh, -face, or remote. And some of the uh, telepathic communications can be done at very large distances between the stars. Telepathy is a key factor which uh, defines the difference between the third density and the fourth density. People in the 3D don't have telepathy. When they become telepathic, uh, they shift to the 4D. It is the main force, the main factor, the main quality which makes the transition from the 3D to 4D, which drives the transition from the 3D to 4D. Although remote uh, communication, telepathic communication does require seeing each other, uh, local communication is more efficient. Contactees, people who visited alien ships, uh, tell that they can hear the telepathic communications when they see the faces of people speaking to them. And when they don't see the faces, they don't hear them. So apparently there are different types of tele telepathic communication. Also, we know that each uh, alien race has a different type of telepathic communication. And also they have common types which they use to communicate to each other. So they have languages. Um, and some of the languages are universally used in the galaxy. Now, uh, for aliens, for the aliens in the 4D, the telepathic communications are natural. They don't need instruments for that. But to communicate to, to humans in our 3D reality, they use te technology. They send telepathic communications to channelers and, uh, and, pro and people who receive these communications using technological means. It is possible that local telepathy and remote telepathy uh, have different, uh, are based on different principles. It has been suggested that the skin on the faces of uh, some of the extraterrestrial races is uh, specially designed to emit telepathic communications where, which can be received when you look at them. Uh, the remo remote telecommunication, telepathic communication is clearly transdimensional. We understand that it, 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 that the brain uh, creates a certain uh, tra transforms the information to a specific uh, vibrational pattern, then uh, this pattern uh, is electric uh, or electroacoustic in the brain and nerves. The then this uh, electroacoustic vibration is converted to transdimensionally to non-electromagnetic communication uh, in another dimension and is transmitted through the through the soul connection fr from uh, one soul to another through the tree of life and then it reaches the, uh, the recipient using a specific address which is possibly defined by a certain specific, specific vibration, specific vibrational pattern. Then the recipient converts the transdimensional, other dimensional vibration into the neural vibration and then back to the uh, to the understanding in the brain, which is also uh, happens through the neural vibration and the interface between neural electromagnetic vibration and uh, transdimensional vibration in the etheric, in the possibly etheric uh, fields. Telepathic communications are received by um, people on several levels. It could be the level of understanding. It could be the level of visual understanding, visual images. Uh, which would be received through visual cortex, then it could be understanding on the level of hearing as sounds. It could be understood as uh, language. So it could be uh, by it could bypass the sound reception, but still comes as uh, certain vibration in the mind. It could also uh, be received as text and. Uh, there are also understandings on the level of emotions and inner knowing which cannot be translated in, uh, into, uh, in directly into words. Uh, people who receive telepathic communications, remote telepathic communications from the aliens uh, report the feelings of um, uh, specific feelings, uh, physical feelings in, in the different parts of the body. 
uh, so that the specific, for example, specific consciousness, uh, communications from different aliens come as feelings in different parts of the head, which could be the sensation of heaviness, a certain vibration, low pitch, high pitch, tingling, buzz, excitation, heaviness, pulsation, jerking, and so on, uh, warmth, cold, and so on. As we said, the development of telepathy is the key advancement which is needed for the ascension of the humanity to the 4D. The children are, which are born uh, these days have better ability for the telepathy than the older people. Yet the humans by genetic design are capable for the telepathic communications. When humans uh, end up or in the, uh, are taken to the 4D reality, they, uh, they, uh, their uh, telepathic abilities awaken. The development of the telepathic abilities among humans is helped by meditations, by spiritual growth and by practice. We know that psychic abilities and remote viewing abilities can be taught and trained. Basic telepathic abilities can also be trained uh, in humans. Since the humanity doesn't have its own telepathic language, it takes practice between two people or groups of people to uh, develop their own telepathic language to transmit messages. They have to find a certain specific wave and a specific pattern which would transmit the information from one person to another. Some people that live together and are spiritually connected develop the telepathic communications easier. Yet the telepathic communications on Earth are difficult, slow, unreliable, and imprecise. They work in specific conditions and under specific uh, benef beneficial circumstances, but uh, du during the rigorous tests they often fail. Sometimes people develop telepathic uh, communications with their dogs and cats. Especially children are good in developing telepathic uh, communications with, with, with pets. Purity, happiness and spiritual harmony help telepathic abilities. Modern education, materialistic style of life, doubt and uh, sadness block the telepathic ability. Being in a happy mood and in highly spiritual environment boosts the telepathic ability. For the development, development of telepathic abilities, it really helps to be in the positive mood for many days in a row, which is very rare uh, in the modern world. To practice the telepathic communication, you may choose to use, um, to make uh, simple cards with geometric images, colors, words, numbers, um, which are meaningful and easier to visualize. You would want to practice it with a friend who is also willing to develop these abilities and um, dedicate a specific meditation and practice for meditation and time for practice. And don't hurry, give yourself time for sending the messages and receiving the messages. As you practice, you might find that some days and times are more, more beneficial than others. Uh, you would likely find that healthy foods um, promote telepathic communications and coffee and um, sadness are strongly blocking those. Also make sure to uh, remove yourself from the electromagnetic radiation such as Wi-Fi, cell phones and uh, uh, power lines. Being in the nature, especially uh, in the forest and uh, near the uh, rivers and lakes and the ocean would would help you to um, help your practice. End of chap chapter telepathy. Chapter te telepathy continued. Uh, telepathic communication between humans can occur on different levels and frequencies. Main levels for the telepathic communications are the heart, the throat chakra, the ears, and uh, the third eye. And, and the third eye. Communication through the heart chakra, the main communication through the chart, heart chakra is, uh, is empathy. This is the first level of telepathy which is good to start with. On this level you might not uh, receive the words and the symbols and um, specific information but you would receive the emotions. By pra practicing um, 
empathy and uh, empathy and telepathy. The word, the new words telepathy symbolizes the combination of telepathy and empathy. By practicing empathy, you establish the first connection to other people and feel their emotions. Well, this is symbolized by the green color of the heart chakra. The next level is blue, the throat chakra, and um, uh, it would correspond to their voice, uh, hearing the voice, and um, sending the voice. You might receive the you might hear the voices and uh, receive the text messages through that frequency. And the next level is purple, the third eye chakra. And there you would understand, uh, they receive uh, images. And um, just a little above frequency for the whole, uh, uh, I would say, whole, whole brain cortex and also for the unity of the heart and brain, vi brain vibrations. So it would be uh, combination of green and purple you would receive understanding so that would uh, require you to com connect on uh, multiple levels and would receive understanding it might seem that developing telepathy is very difficult because only a few people have telepathic communication and even that is usually very unreliable and uh, slow and um, poorly reproducible but keep in mind that the whole humanity consciousness shifts and um, we are constantly being upgraded so at certain point it is likely that we will move into the new level of frequencies where certain restrictions and veils will be removed and telepathy will be expressed on much stronger level and it would be much easier to develop telepathy so don't give up uh, practice what you can and uh, look for that look forward for the time when it will be much easier uh, end of addition for telepathy chapter the matrix here i will expand the idea of the matrix reality and we'll speak about the law of attraction and uh, the principles of manifestation the idea of the matrix reality have been popularized by the by a movie the matrix it is an old idea which is uh, especially prominent in the eastern philosophy and buddhism especially in hinduism and buddhism the essence of the idea of the matrix is that our reality is not really real that our reality is a dream and there is a more real reality which is a spiritual reality it reverses the idea that our physical real body has a soul which is ethereal. ethereal. The new understanding is that this spirit reality is real and uh, this reality is an illusion. We usually say it's not that uh, a person has a spiritual experience. It is the spirit that has the earth experience in other words it's not the body that has a soul it is the soul that has the body it really depend, depends on the perspective for many people living a daily life it's really hard to imagine that this all oh, that this material world is an illusion yet when you dream at night you shift in a very different world which has very different rules this world is called template reality it's not a real spirit world but it has more properties of the spirit world than the material world. In the spirit world, it is hard to ditch it. In the dream, it's really hard to tell whether you are dreaming or not. You forget. Usually in the dream, you don't know that you are dreaming. But if you realize that you are dreaming, you can study the dream reality and bring back to your conscious reality the memory of the dream it really helps to break the no, veil between your physical reality and the dream reality and it is one of the good ways for the integration david wilcock mentions an interesting property of the dream reality in the dream reality when you uh, return back to the place where you have been before the place always changes while in real physical reality um, you come back and the place stays usually stays the same there are many ways to discover that the material world is an illusion very often people live the completely material life 
and have complete, a completely materialistic understanding of life um, until adult, uh, until they, until an extraordinary event causes their awakening. Often this awakening uh, is um, caused by a near-death experience. For some it is um, a positive awakening which is coming through a Kundalini experience or through energetic healing experience. Sometimes it is a visitation by extraterrestrials or spirit be angels or spiritual beings. For some people it, just, uh, uh, it, it is just a gradual result of spiritual growth. At some point uh, you come to the, to the point where you are able to perceive the uh, reality of the spiritual world and also you can see their glitches in the material matrix. Many children are awakened to the spiritual reality from, the, from their birth, but uh, very often by their modern education makes them to forget and disconnect from this awakening. So the children are, are awakened from the beginning, then become disconnected during the, uh, your early adult life, and then they grow back into the understanding later. Uh, the movie The Matrix also gave an, uh, an analogy of the software. It helps to imagine the material reality as a computer game, as a software produced running program, as a program running by a software. This software is, uh, this program is very complex and almost perfect. It's not only programmed by the digits and symbols, but also by waves and geometric patterns. It is not also, it's also not fully artificial. There are many sentient beings and uh, intelligent consciousnesses that support this uh, uh, material illusion. There are many creation spirits which work uh, as a supportive, as a supporter of this creation. Uh, some work on uh, the creating illusion, the illusion of time and fixing the problems with it. Some work on uh, as elementals, the spirits of fire, water, air, and earth. Uh, the angelic beings um, oversee the general progress of the illusion and general health of the illusion on all the levels and are uh, designed and intended to uh, come into the re this reality as messengers and active participants who can fix critical problems. The planet is conscious, the oceans are conscious, the stars are conscious. All of them have free will and it's really hard to find a part of the reality which ha doesn't have a free will and uh, which is not conscious. The, fo the forest, the trees are all connected by a hive mind and are a living organism. The oceans and the rivers are conscious. Welcome to the fairy tale world. Once you know, once you're awakened, we come back to the physical reality, and many of us still need the reminders that the reality is not as real as it seems. One of the best daily proofs uh, of the illusion, illusionary nature of this reality is energy. Energy healing is a miracle, a gift which is given to us to. Uh, be able to transform this reality to the better and give, to give uh, people hope, the relief of pain, the relief of sickness and the daily evidence, the daily confirmation of the illusionary quality of this reality. Same relates to psychic work, to uh, clairvoyance, telekinesis, telepathy, premonition, and other little miracles which are permitted in this, in this world. Yet this matrix, this reality is very strong and it is designed to protect itself. When um, it is designed, period, it is designed to perpetuate its own illusion and prevent us from awakening this illusion of separation, the illusion of separation from the soul and the physical mind, the illusion of separation of the physical mind from the soul, protects itself 
and gives us the experience of being responsible for everything and uh, surviving in a hostile environment. This is why it is so difficult to demonstrate to the whole world that the, the reality is illusionary. Once you find, uh, receive the proofs for yourself, you get these proofs. But when you try to demonstrate it to others, the proofs disappear. There are some experiments which prove the illusionary quality of the reality, but they have uh, a borderline significance, borderline power of proof. So many people have to choose daily, do they believe in the spirit or, uh, should, or do they ignore it? This choice, this trial is the main lesson of this experience, this life experience. You are constantly faced with a choice, whether you go with the mainstream material reality or you go with the spirit. Surprisingly, even the main prophets of uh, humanity, such as Jesus and Muhammad, faced that choice. They, they, they also had doubts and had to decide which side they take. Chapter, the law of attraction. The law of attraction says positive attracts positive, negative attracts negative, which is actually the opposite of what you have in electromagnetics. In, in magnetic, mag, uh, magnetic pole, positive pole attracts negative, and negative pole attracts, posit attracts positive. Another way of stating the law of attraction is similar attracts similar. To understand how it works, uh, it really helps to look at the reality as a dream which you are dreaming. That the whole life which you live is a dream of your consciousness. And in this dream, what you think affects how the life develops. The focus of your attention affects what uh, storylines are developed. We say for optimist, uh, a, glass, a glass is half full and for pessimist, the glass is half empty. If your approach is optimistic and you focus on the positive side of the life, this positive vibration attracts other positive vibrations due to the law of attraction. If you focus on love and kindness, you attract love and kindness. If you focus on fear, anger and suffering, you attract fear, anger and suffering. Bashar says life is like a mirror. If you want your reflection in the mirror to smile, uh, do you force it to smile or do you smile first? So it is in life. To have li the life to smile to, you have to smile first. Interestingly, interestingly, even very materialistic people accept the law of attraction. They realize that to achieve something in life, you have to smile first. It really works well in sales. Many salespeople force themselves to smile, force to be friendly, force to themselves to be optimistic, and it works miracles for them. Same works in other parts of the business and actually works in other parts of life. So you do with children. If you want a child to stop crying and smile, you smile first and then be kind and nice to them, even if they are not kind and not, smile, and not, not nice. So you treat the whole world as children, you have to smile first. Sometimes it's really hard, especially if you feel frightened, angry, depressed, in pain, sick, and so on. So finding the bright side of life is an art. But when you can smile, when you can see the bright side, and there are a lot of help, helpers and a lot of help you get when you go on this path. When you have a chance, meet friends, connect to the friends, and when you feel down, connect to friends again and um, seek for their help. Help of others is one of the great tools to achieve positivity. Also make recorded media of your friends, YouTube videos, movies, books, poetry, prayers, and there is always a way to connect to different aspects of creation to the God and the Divine Mother through the prayer. Invite angels and your ancestor to, ancestors to help you in your uh, sadness and to find the bright side of life again. One of the big steps in mastering the law of attraction is to uh, learn to accept death. If you see the death as a part of life, 
then you realize it is all a one big illusion and death can be taken neutrally without much sadness, without uh, looking at the dark side of the life. The death of physical body is only the death of the physical body since the soul returns home and uh, will be incarnated again. Understanding the illusion nature of life, the illusion nature, illusionary nature of death, the illusionary nature of time allows you to perceive most of the events as, as in life as prompts, as neutral events. And from there you can always choose a bright side and it is always is your choice. It always is your choice. Chapter Manifestation when you understand the life as your dream, um, you realize that the events and things in your life are created by you. Everything that happens to you in your life is happening within your consciousness and is created by yourself. When you focus on positive things, you create positive events. When you create when you focus on negative things, you create negative events. This is called manifestation. First you have the idea and then you materialize it and it's called manifestation. Everything that you create is manifestation. You manifest things. Sometimes it is a hard concept to grasp. But as you go about life, you learn to manifest consciously. You learn the um, rules and the skills of the magic you practice and learn creating positive reality in your life and as it becomes second nature of yours then you stop doubting it because it works one of the tricks in manifesting is to realize there is a good time for manifesting and bad time for manifesting oh wait so time is an illusion why would you wait for a good time just because it is a very good very strong illusion <laughs> in your uh, daily life you realize time is of essence. It's not possible to live without time. Uh, the plants don't grow without time. There is no development without time. So the whole illusion of the reality is based on time. So when you need to manifest, you use this illusionary time to manifest. And you realize that there are good times for manifesting and bad times for manifesting. And um, you calibrate your intentions and calibrate your plans according to how the reality feels. Is it a good time for manifesting or not? Here, astrology and tarot card readings uh, come to help. These are again miraculous tools which are gift, given to you as a gift to help you navigate this dream reality. Learn the basics of astrology, get a pack of tarot cards and consult with them to understand what this day, what are the vibrations of this day and which directions are open to you on this day. As you learn the skills, uh, feeling the directions and uh, intuitively understanding the possibilities of the day become second nature. Then you don't need cards to feel it. You get the idea just from the vibration of the day. On some days, all the opportunities are closed. The creation forces are at rest. And this could be a good day for contemplation and looking back. On some days, the uh, uh, directions uh, of relationships and meeting new friends could be open. So you might go in that direction and manifest good events in this direction. On other days, the material world is good, uh, is, is in a good condition for manifesting. Some days are good for cleaning, some days are good for doing work. And some days are good for everything. Keep in mind that the free choice is the major principle of this reality. So you always have a free choice. You can ignore the prohibitions, ignore unfavorable conditions and force your will through reality. It is your dream. You dream it in a way you like. Once you realize that the reality is a dream, you still have to take care of your body. And if your body is tired, which is also illusionary, uh, it is a very good idea to take rest. When the body is tired, manifestation might become difficult. Simple things don't follow your desires. Simple things fall apart. And you might notice that the reality starts breaking up when you don't get sleep, when you go, don't get rest. 
if you are tired you start getting lots of negative news the your reality becomes defragmented because somehow the health of your body and health of your physical mind help to keep your reality in good shape your illusionary reality your dream in good shape it is all one unified field one unified matrix so when a part of the matrix which your physical body becomes tired the whole matrix starts shaking that is why one of the reasons that extreme sickness or extreme trauma causes uh, near-death experience and causes the awakening so when your matrix falls apart you, the bigger reality the spirit world becomes transparent and open to you yet it is not a good idea to go to the extreme tiredness and go to the extreme near-death experiences just to discover your spirit nature since you came to this world for a purpose and to experience this world and if you break your body just destruct your body or damage your body your purpose becomes more difficult it is much smarter to discover your spiritual nature through gentler means through meditation um, healing and uh, learning from enlightened teacher when you are in the presence of a highly spiritual being such as uh, highly spiritual humans and extraterrestrials they lift your vibration they your vibration comes up towards theirs they meet you halfway and as you raise your vibration you know, the spiritual nature of your reality becomes more visible it is like in a forest climbing on the highest tree or climbing on a hill to see what is around when you raise your vibration you see above the trees and you realize that your reality has been a dream and there is a bigger reality so is the spirit world real it is more real than physical world but of course it is also an illusion but it is more basic more fundamental illusion first the spiritual world is created by the creator and then the spiritual world creates the physical dream reality so by lifting from this illusionary world material illusionary world to spirit world you just um see the next illusion which is more real and then from the spirit world you keep up being upgraded upgraded and upgraded as you grow until you unite with the creator and see the whole world at once and become one with everything there is a wonderful joke about dalai lama coming to a pizza shop and dalai lama says make me one with everything uh one journalist um when he was interviewing Dalai Lama told Dalai Lama the story and Dalai Lama couldn't get it because he didn't know much about pizza and how do you make one with everything with pizza so for him the spiritual nature of this joke was understandable but the pizza pizza side of the story was uh, not possible to understand next thing to understand is that this physical reality is a collective dream it is your personal dream and at the same time it is a collective dream to understand it better consider the computer games the original computer games were played by one person on their personal computers now the uh, computer games are often played collectively and each person plays uh, their own game on their own computer but the computers are connected to a network and uh, and these games become collective so each person uses each gamer uses the same software to create the, the world which is similar to the world of others and they see others in their world so the network is used to deliver information about the actions of other people to the model of this world which is run on the computer of each gamer so each gamer creates a dream creates the model in their own computer and in each computer it is a little bit different because they look at this model of the world from their perspective so they act and uh, live in this computer world and other people also live in this computer generated world it's all an illusion but with every year this illusion becomes more and more realistic what is more interesting these people in the computer these artificial people in the computer 
generated world, they often die and then are born again. And this is a good model of reincarnation. Uh, even more in many games now, people when they when they died and are born again, they are born in a new place and lose all their possessions, which is another great model of reincarnation. So when you create this dream reality, you have a lot of help. You create it by yourself, but in your own consciousness, but you get a lot of help from other humans, extraterrestrials, elementals, angelics, uh, timekeepers, guardians, and many other consciousness, conscious, intelligent, wise, and kind beings who help you to keep this reality going. Moreover, some of the kind, nice, and wise beings are actually responsible for creating negative experiences. And they do it of kindness to help you run this program. So some wise beings are responsible to bring in, for bringing death to humans, to making the life short. Some kind spiritual beings, supportive beings from uh, creation reality, from the creator's um, realm, help to bring diseases, help to bring wars, and so on. So it is a big complex dream which is created by many conscious, conscious and intelligent uh, beings. And the key principle of this experience, of this dream, is um, free will. And uh, not only your individual free will is respected, also free will of the collective, such as global human collective, the collective of different countries, races, social groups, religions, uh, unions, and so on. This is why the human collective wants war. The war is permitted, as long as it doesn't destroy the whole matrix of the reality. When the war is aiming at destroying the matrix of the reality, then it is prevented through magic miraculous means. Moreover, many of you have already died in this life and have been miraculously brought back to life. If you remember the points in your life when you were supposed to die from sickness, from accidents, from sickness and accidents, and then you miraculously were saved, you actually died and then the angels of creation uh, would come and rewind the record of life and miraculously save you and make sure that you don't remember exactly your death. So the um, experience of continuous life continues, although the life is, wasn't continuous, it was disconnected at a certain point. So welcome to the dream reality, welcome to the matrix, realize the importance of the lessons, realize that it is a gift to you to be able to live this life and you do, you're not supposed to um, grieve most of the time. It is for you to experience all emotions and then it's your choice to choose the positivity and to choose the spiritual side. End of chapter. End of chapter. In addition to the meditation chapter, since the main work of the meditation happens on non-physical plane, in the spiritual plane, it doesn't really matter what physical actions do you uh, utilize to achieve the effect. This is why there is no single formula for meditation. Although it is very helpful to start the meditations in a standard way with the help of guides, humans, uh, well, with the help of guides, teachers, or teaching materials, once you learn to shift in the spiritual area and one, once you learned to achieve the spiritual results, it is possible to uh, start doing the meditations uh, not in a quiet place, not in a protected place, not in a sitting position, not in a special position, but anywhere at any time during any activity. 
for some people it might be even pass more more easy might, it might be easier to do meditations during certain repetitive activities rather than in a complete stillness but keep in mind of that it is really helpful to be in a protected environment and in a sitting or lying position to fully shift out of the body because otherwise the body might uh, fall and get hurt also as you are a beginner you might uh, if, if you are a beginner you might get hurt by uh, influences of negative by negative influence by traumas by might get hurt by certain neg negativity in the environment so it's better to be uh, to begin in a protected environment when when you are sure there is no disturbances it's important to turn off the phone and once you finish the meditation uh, if you are not fully protected don't open your email emails and text messages until you really get back to physical reality and you are protected again many people when they start to meditate have trouble facing themselves and become restless and distract often it happens that um, you would have a lot of hidden trauma anger and pain and meditation would bring this this trauma anger and pain to the pain to the surface many beginners when they face themselves when they look inside they find that pain and it is painful to look at it so it takes my some conscious work some conscious work during the meditations and in conscious time and awakened time to face these traumas to discover them to face them to resolve them and to disconnect from them there are certain practices that help resolve in the past traumas the main idea is that the past is in the past and it doesn't help you to hold on the past trauma it slows you down and it blocks the energy flows and hurts your health so the secret is to separate the lesson from the trauma from the pain and the trauma itself and many practices including buddhist practices meditation practices psychoanalysis past life regressions you look at the past trauma understand what happened separate the lesson from the trauma keep the memory of the experience forgive yourself and others involved in the trauma and release the pain you know that you resolve the trauma when you uh, healed the pain when you can think about the past experience remember the experience clearly but don't feel the pain anymore uh, but feel instead the forgiveness compassion love to yourself and don't feel the shame anymore you separate your current state from the past you shift to the new uh, form of yourself and realize that past experience is in the past and it is separate from you now you understand that all the experiences are stored in Akashic records and become the the possession of the universe all experiences and lessons belong to the universal consciousness and all experiences are equally valid you can let go of the pain heal the trauma and move on many of the past traumas you can heal by yourself but often it helps also to uh, get help from a friend a teacher and a healer so it is very helpful to connect to other healers and become healer yourself finding friends of high spiritual vibration is a really good help in the spiritual growth